Welcome back to Microbiology Lab. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're gonna discuss a second stain that we did in experiment four, and that's called the endospore stain. So before we get into the actual staining procedure and discuss the basics of it, let's discuss what an endospore is and why it's important. So endospores are basically tough keratin-coated cells that contain a dormant clone of a bacteria. So if we have a bacteria such as Bacillus subtilis, this bacteria may not always be in an optimum environment, right? So for you as a human, maybe you have an optimum environment. You like to have your house at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, you like to have plenty of food present in your refrigerator, you know, all that kind of stuff. But what happens if you run out of food or your AC goes off? And so it's in the middle of the summer in, let's say, the Texas heat, and your temperature skyrockets to 90 degrees. Well, that's not really optimal. That's kind of like what can happen in the case of a bacterial environment. So if Bacillus subtilis, for example, gets into a hostile environment, such as high temperature or high salinity, that means high salt, which will kill most bacteria, or if nutrients become too sparse, so the bacteria doesn't have enough nutrients in the environment to live on, then instead of dying, which is what will probably happen to the cell, it will form what's called an endospore. Now this endospore basically contains a clone of the original cell right here. Okay. And this tough keratin coat that surrounds the endospore is going to allow it to survive because it's so tough. Keratin is the material that makes up your fingernails, your hair, and your skin. And when you condense that, it's very hard to destroy. It can survive a wide range of conditions, um, and it will remain as this endospore until the conditions return to optimum, in which case you could more or less think of this endospore as hatching, in quotes, and now you have a clone of the original Bacillus subtilis cell up here, okay? And so that's what an endospore does. So when the environment returns to optimum conditions, the endospore, in quotes, as I said, hatches, and it basically preserves this original cell, not directly, but it creates a clone of that, okay? Which only emerges once the conditions return to be an optimum. So once the temperature goes to normal, or there's normal salinity, or nutrients are present again. And very similar to the way that we had two genera that are acid fast, we have two genera that produce endospores. And these are Bacillus, for example, Bacillus subtilis, and Clostridium, for example, Clostridium perfringens. Okay? We're not going to be dealing with any Clostridium in this class, but we will be dealing with several Bacillus species, such as Bacillus cereus and Bacillus subtilis. All right? So make sure you understand these two genera. All right? and they belong to the endospore producing organisms. Now we're gonna discuss the actual procedure for doing the endospore stain. And we're gonna see a lot of stuff that's similar to that of the acid fast test. So first of all, we have our heat fix slide. We made a smear, we heat fixed it. So we've got our bacteria on there. And we're gonna use the primary stain. The primary stain in the endospore stain is called malachite green, all right? And we're going to use heat, it says here steam, but we're going to use heat to drive that malachite green into the cells, okay? Um, again, because this endospore is very tough, if we don't heat the cells, then the malachite green cannot penetrate through the keratin layer of the endospore. Just like in the acid fast stain, if we don't heat it, then the carbol fusion could not penetrate through the lipid, waxy cell wall of the acid fast organism. So heat is very important here in the endospore stain. In fact, heating, again, is the critical step, all right? If you don't heat this long enough, then you will not see a green endospore in the end. So you have to make sure you drive that malachite green into the endospore, which is this small dot right here. Then we're going to decolorize. Now, unlike any of the other two stains we've done, which are the acid fast stain and the gram stain, the decolorization here is done with just water. Okay, there's no actual decolorizer or acid alcohol. So we just decolorize with water and notice what happens. We have this endospore inside here in this endospore producing bacteria and the endospore retains the green part, but the actual cell around it that contains the endospore uh, is colorless now. If we have an endospore non-producing bacteria, so something that does not produce an endospore, the entire cell is colorless, okay? And that's with water, or the decolorization step. 
And then finally, we counter stain with safranin. So this is a, a, a counter stain that can actually be done with a couple. One of them is safranin, another one is Congo red. They're both red stains. Your lab manual actually, actually says Congo red, but we use safranin since we already use that for the gram stain and it's cheaper to buy in bulk. So we counter stain with safranin. And what will happen is the cell containing the endospore will stain red, but the endospore will remain green. And then the entire cell that's not producing endospores will be completely red. And so in the end, when you look at a micrograph image of this, you're looking for these green dots. And those green dots are going to be the endospores. And then the red cells, or kind of pinkish, are going to be what are called vegetative cells. So here's a micrograph image. So we see right here what's called a vegetative cell. Vegetative cells are going to be pink. And again, we're going to recognize those as cells that are not producing endospores. Okay? Um, that doesn't mean that they cannot produce endospores. After all, all of these are going to be one species, such as Bacillus subtilis. It's just that at this given time, this particular cell is not producing an endospore. And therefore, we call it a vegetative cell. Okay? It could produce one later, it's just not right now. And these green dots right here, we have several of them littered along the slide, these are the actual endospores. And you can kind of see it here, uh, but they're actually inside um, an actual Bacillus subtilis cell. They lie inside. Okay? It's kind of hard to see at this resolution. But the point is, is these green dots are the actual endospores, and then any cell that's pink is going to be the vegetative cell. On an exam, you would be required to identify a cell as vegetative cell or an actual endospore. Okay? And to do that, you just have to distinguish between green and pink, pinkish red. All right. So hopefully that makes sense. And before we conclude this video, I want to reiterate a couple of things. All right? uh, first of all, remember the two genera that are endospore producing. Those are going to be Bacillus, such as Bacillus subtilis, and Clostridium, which we will not deal with any species of in this semester. Okay? Also, remember that we've got Malachite green as the primary stain. Safranin or Congo red, depending, is going to be the counter stain. And the critical step is going to be the actual heating, which allows the Malachite green to be driven into the endospore, which is important to do because of that tough keratin coat. We have to heat it to drive that stain in. And then also, obviously, remember the results. Green is the endospore. Pink is the vegetative cell. All right. So hopefully that makes sense. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.